Hello everyone, it is I, Vooch of Paint. This week we're doing something a little special. Instead of one single A4 piece of artwork, I thought why not make two A5 pieces of artwork. Which is technically still an A4 piece of artwork, but split into two different paintings. But it's still two different paintings. <laughs> Anyways, that's essentially what we're doing today. Although these are not just going to be any two paintings. No. A while back on my Discord server, a friend of mine shared some pictures of their cat sitting in weird positions. <laughs> and because I thought it was funny, I wanted to paint the cat sitting weird. Well, that and also I like cats and I wanted an excuse to paint a cat. Again, and that's basically the excuses I used. This cat here is called Loki. He's a chunky little boy who, like many other cats, is a little bit of a menace. <laughs> he likes sitting in boxes and is definitely crazy for catnip. Anyways, I obviously started out with a simple sketch for both of the paintings that I was going to do. If I remember to do so, I will put the pictures of the cats up here if I remember to do this. But you're also, you know, welcome to hop in on the Discord because my friend is not done sending pic pictures of a cat sitting weird. <laughs> we sent one just a few days ago from, well, technically a week ago from when this video came out. Yesterday from when I'm taking this voiceover, but we did send another picture and jokingly, apparently jokingly said that I could draw them. I can draw that picture as well. But you bet I'm taking that seriously. If you tell me I can draw that cat, I will draw that cat. There's no way around it. So I guess you can expect a part two for this. So I started with a sketch, beginning with the image on the left hand side, because I kind of move from left to right. Just That's just how I work for reasons. That's where I painted the image of him sitting on the staircase. First he gets his head, which I draw an oval kind of shape for, and then I kind of sketch out a sort of bean for his body. And also sketching out where his tail is going to go, where his legs are going to be, what shape they're gonna have, because he's kind of sitting in a laid back, kind of sort of relaxed position. That's also looking a little odd. And once I've got, you know, the basic body shape, I sketch in sort of more of the details, like the general shape of the face, where the fluff is gonna be, where the spots on his fur are going to be, where the darker spots are gonna be. And some of the stripes, well, though I don't think I sketched those in from the beginning, I just sort of thought maybe I'll just try to paint them in once I'm actually painting with the colours, rather than sketching them in with my sketch. I don't know. The second image, which is the picture on the right, gets the same sort of process for the sketch. So, you know, start with the head, work down the body, sketch in the legs. But obviously this is going to be a little bit in a different setting, and this does get a little bit complicated at first. I don't sketch out all the details in the background first, but thought maybe I just put in a line or two to guide me. And eventually I do decide, nah, let's just put in all of the detail that I kind of want in there. I just thought at first maybe it's gonna be too busy if I put in everything, but eventually I was like, nah, let's, let's put in all of it, or at least most of it. And then I kind of had a long moment of hesitation with am I going to do the line art or am I going to just go in with the paints? I was really just kind of struggling with myself. Do I, do I not, to ink or not to ink, what do I do? And eventually I decided to ink it, as you can see. Obviously starting again with the picture on the left hand side and just sort of outlining Loki with my black waterproof ink. In part, the outline is sort of like kind of disconnected a little bit in parts where he's got a lot of fluff and fur and hair, you know, because cats are furry. At least most cats don't want to talk for all cats. Don't want to offend any cats. Great. The eyes and nose obviously get continuous lines because those aren't fluffy. Usually, I don't know. I haven't seen a fluffy eye yet, so 
I am assuming that m most eyes are <laughs> not fluffy, so I'm not gonna make it look fluffy. I could be wrong about this, but moving on. And then during the line process, I also kind of, at some point, I just decided, okay, we need the stripe guidelines everywhere, or at least in most places, as many places as possible. I just need some guidelines, otherwise I might mess this up with the stripes, because cut stripes are not easy to draw and paint, so this was a little bit something I had to do. And, well, the background on the left-hand side was a lot easier to outline than the background on the right-hand side, and on the right-hand side I'm pretty sure I made a couple of mistakes because I didn't want to be completely accurate and thought, ah, just draw a couple of lines here, there, up, down, sideways, it'll be fine, nobody's going to care except you. Which in some cases is not entirely true, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. On the left-hand side it was just a couple of lines because in the end stairs are just a few lines. At least in my opinion. Anyways, compared to the other image, it was just a few lines and that was a lot easier than doing any detail in background. There was this sort of kind of rack thing right behind Loki in the right hand image and I kind of started to kind of try to sketch that out in ink without any actual guidelines. Anyways, that, that was that with the inking situation. And then once I'm done with all the inking, the cats are looking great. I take my eraser and obviously erase the pencil because I don't really want that in the final result. So I erase that and then I take my trusty Van Gogh watercolour palette so I can start painting. For both cats the colours I use are pretty much the same because, well it's the same cat. It's not just gonna be orange in one and then normal in the other. That's not really how it works unless you have different lighting situations which I mean in this one they're both kind of similar so you know. As a base colour for Loki's darker areas that aren't his white stomach I used sepia because his fur is sort of a greyish dark brown in some spots at least because Loki's stomach you know as I've just said is white so obviously in those areas I didn't use the sepia. Those areas will later be shaded in with some neutral tint and paints grey a little bit as well. In the first image I noticed a slightly more reddish brown around his nose like it's just a little bit of a red brownish spot. So I took some light oxide and painted a little bit around his mouth and nose area with that to give it that little look. It's literally just a, a little bit of a dot there. Some of the features I didn't immediately paint like the eyes, the nose and the bell that's on his collar in the left image. On the right image he's got a bone colour collar which is kind of cute. I don't know, I like them both. I like both of the colours. They're very cute. Anyways, I don't know why I didn't immediately paint the eyes and nose, because they are basically very similar to the colours of the rest of the image. All I know is I didn't paint the bell immediately because <laughs> it was a very drastically different colour to the rest of Loki and I wanted to stick to working with the browns before I tackled the red of the bell. And once I do dare to try the eyes. I first put down a layer of sepia in the left image and then realised that Loki actually has a somewhat green eyes in the picture so I tried to rectify that by using a little green that was still left on my palette from a previous painting. I don't really clean my palette in between paintings so I'm mixing colours with colours that are on my palette still and I don't necessarily remember what those colours were made of. So, yep, that's what happened. His stripes are painted in with a mix of sepia and also some paints grey, especially on the left painting because there he's got a really, really dark spot where his fur is meeting the staircase and there's like a really dark corner there, you can only just about make out his tail and it was a bit difficult for me to kind of get that. Right, there was a lot of me trying to layer darker paint on top and then it dried and I realised some of the paint underneath had lifted off the painting and now it looked lighter in that area and then I had to go over it again and it's probably the paper, but should have been more careful with my layers, if I'm honest. 
The nose I also painted with a darker mix of sepia for both of the cats. Then Loki's bell on the first, well the left painting, gets a light layer of carmine and then a slightly darker shade of carmine which I achieved by mixing a little bit of the green from my palette with the carmine <laughs> because, I don't know, that's a very very easy way of mixing a red that's slightly darker for me. Right side Loki has his legs spread out a little bit more and there is a slightly reddish, yellowish kind of bit of fur towards the bottom of him and a little bit up the leg as well, which is something that I again used the light oxide red for and I think I put a little bit of yellow ochre in there as well. I don't completely remember this and I should have written down the colours, but I don't know, I never learn from this apparently. I need to write down my colours, guys. Now, the backgrounds are two completely different situations for both of the paintings because the left side background is clearly not as detailed as the one on the right. So I use less colours for the background of the left painting than I do for the right painting, which makes sense. I started with the staircase background because <laughs> that was going to be very easy. The wall would be white with a little bit of shading in neutral tint and paints grey and the staircase would be a light oxide red and towards, well, in front of Loki it's a, I painted it with a little bit of burnt sienna as well because it had more of a yellowish tone to it rather than the reddish brown kind of colour. Did it have to be that specific with the colours there? No, but I kind of wanted to be. For the shadows underneath Loki and on the staircase and everything, I used sepia and I'm pretty sure that's the only colour I used for that. I might have used a little bit of a paint grey as well towards the dark, 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 dark corner of the staircase where the stairs meet Loki. And then I eventually found the courage to work on the background of the right side painting, for which I first put down some water Water in the areas where the background would be just really really dark which was most of the painting so that was very simple and easy I just wet the area and put in some indigo and eventually went over that in paints grey which is what I use for most of the rest of this area afterwards because the indigo felt a little too blue not sure where I was going with it there's a few details that I paint in like the little table in the background with the books and notes and paper and whatnot which I just represented by a bunch of vaguely book-related scribbles. I got a bit lazy. I used a little yellow ochre for some of the lighter bits in that area around the table and some lemon yellow for the yellow section of the wall in the back. So I don't know, it's still a somewhat limited palette but we're definitely in the area of more colours than the left painting. There are some areas in the painting where in the end I think I should have gone even darker but I didn't because I thought it was fine the way it was and I didn't want another disaster like I did with the dark, 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 dark areas of the left side painting where the paint lifted back up and it got lighter and I couldn't do anything about it. So that was essentially the painting process of these two paintings of Loki. I hope that made at least a little bit of sense. I mean... <laughs> I don't talk or think about my painting process a lot and I probably forgot to mention a lot of the things I did but hey, I painted you two cat paintings, cut me some slack. In the end though, you still saw the whole process so if you were paying attention to what I was doing with the painting, maybe you noticed something that I didn't talk about. I might try to do this more often where I just talk about my painting process rather than talking about a story that would be related to the painting, kind of, that I'm just interested in because I'm curious about stories. <laughs> but maybe next time I make more notes on what I'm doing in the painting as I'm painting it when I decide to do this kind of video again. But more importantly, I want to paint more cats. I know there's a lot of things I want to paint already, and that I never really get around to painting them. But I still want to paint more cats. Because cats. And as I said, my friend sent more pictures of a cat sitting weird. And also cute little baby pictures of a cat, which are so cute. And I want to draw them. So yes, I will do it eventually. If I keep doing it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep painting the cat. But anyways, the painting is pretty much completed now, so all that's pretty much left to do is to sign off and 
take off the tape, of course, of both of the paintings, and let you guys look at the final result with me. These are both so cute, though I have a slight bias towards the painting that was of Loki on the staircase. In my eyes, it just looks a little nicer. Like, the composition is a lot more pleasing, in a way, because the background is a lot simpler, I think, and it doesn't look so weird and out of place. I don't know, I kind of like this one. Staircase Loki is my favourite, not Desk Loki, who kind of also looks a little bit grumpy, which I don't mind, you know. He's allowed to have emotions, I just prefer the one where he's sitting on the staircase. Anyways, if you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like, comment something fun about cats or any other pet, and subscribe to the channel for more art content. Also check out my social medias down below. I'll also leave a link to the Discord as I've said. For the time being, I am the Witch of Paint and I shall see you all next Sunday. Bye! Oh, look who's made it to the end of the video now. You're probably here for the outtakes. Well, this time I do have quite a few to choose from, so let's see what they are. Which technically is still an A4 piece of artwork, but it's two different images. <laughs> uh, me pretending I'm doing something completely new. And obviously also sketching in where his little tail will go, where the arms are going to go, or rather the legs. Legs are arms, right? <clears throat> I finally start out to take. Start out to take. What? Ha ha, I can't form sentences. Mm.